So I had a revelation recently, and that's that although I am obsessed with Halloween, I am also, how you say, very cheap. So there's this super fun trend that's going around. It's called like the thrifted ghost painting trend thing, kids, hip, hip with the kids. But I went to my local thrift store and the art that they had for sale, their wares were Naruto posters, photography of bison, and a beautiful high quality print of Jesus. And while I do take Christian girl fall aesthetic very seriously, I don't really think that that's the appropriate mood for this video. So in this video, I will be telling you how to make your own ghost painting. So if you wanna hop on this trend with me, I know that I'm a sucker for ghosts. You probably are too. So let's get started. So here's the first step, is you're going to want to just go on your computer or your phone and just pull up images of oil paintings. Oh hey, Becca from the future here. If you already have a thrifted painting that you like and it has a frame on it, just make sure that there's no glass over the painting, make sure the painting is generally clean, aka like not dusty, and then just skip to this timestamp. I like to specify oil because they're the easiest to paint over convincingly. You want to find the biggest size images, the highest quality images that you can. Once you find those and once you've filtered them out, just make sure that the painting is within the public domain. So you can use it for stuff like this for creative purposes. And a really good rule of thumb is anytime the painting is before 1920 or at 1920, usually it's safe to use. You can do a double check if you want, but usually paintings that are either 70 years after the death of the painter or 100 years after the painting was created are in the public domain and thus free for you to use for <laughs> spooky reasons. So you're going to take those images, save them to your computer, do all of that good stuff, make sure that you have them in a high quality JPEG or PDF, and then you're just going to print them out and it should look something like this. Ta-da! So I have these really pretty um, oil paintings that I printed out. This one was actually done by one of my great-great-grandfathers, Orson Doosnip. But anyway, he was an awesome guy, I'm sure. I didn't know him. But, so <laughs> you're gonna print out all of these and what you're going to want to make sure is that they're on paper that's slightly thicker than your regular like cheap printer paper and that preferably has some sort of a little bit of gloss and that's just going to provide a protective layer when we put stuff over it that it should seal in better and just be generally easier for your project. Okay so for this next part you will need some sort of like cardboardy type material, preferably non-corrugated, like without any wavy texture. Something like this. This is literally a piece of mat board that I had laying around my house. Um, so something like this, and that's what we're going to mount the photo on before we put it into our fancy frame. And then you're going to want some Mod Podge. I always called it Mod Podge growing up, but I guess it's Mod Podge. Let me know what you call it in the comments and then just some scissors and a brush that you aren't particularly attached to if you feel like this could ruin your brush because Mod Podge is an adhesive, so it does tend to be harder on brushes. You also will need some sort of frame. I really liked this one because it's vintage and it just has that beautifully kind of old <laughs> feeling. I love stuff that like kind of looks like it came out of the 80s, you know? That's my vibe. So we're ready to start doing stuff. Now, obviously the first thing that you're gonna need to make sure is that the painting, the photo that you've printed out of the painting, that it fits in the frame that you want it to fit in. I know that sounds like a really stupid kind of duh point, but it's happened to me before. So <laughs> be smarter than me. But anyway, so this one fits great, but for our purposes, I actually really wanna use this one. So I am gonna go grab a different frame really fast because this one is not gonna fit. Okay, I'm back. So 
I found this picture frame. I, I picked this one up too, but it's actually too big also. But I found this picture frame, which should be perfect for my little picture that I want to fit in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna cut this out and then we're going to put it aside. Make sure that there's enough that you leave a little bit of room. It's way better that our picture be too big for the frame than it being not big enough. So, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so now that we've cut this out and we're basically ready to go, all you need to do is you're gonna wanna take your mat board. You can trim it before or after adhering it to the mat board. I like to do it after. So you're gonna take your mat board or your cardboard or your chipboard or any other material that's vaguely like this, that's thin enough to still fit behind a photo frame, but isn't so thin that it's going to cause the painting to warp. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna grab your Mod Podge, Mod Podge, and your brush, and you're gonna grab a container that you can put it in that you don't really care about, like a yogurt lid or something else that you can throw away. So I'll be right back, I'll go grab that. All right, so I'm back, I have my lid. It's a salsa lid, not a yogurt lid. Don't worry about it. So we're gonna put some Mod Podge into this. We're gonna just squirt probably about a quarter size. It depends on how large your painting is. I tend to go more Mod Podge than less, but uh, maybe that's a personality flaw or feature. And this is when we're gonna go to the detail shot so it's a little easier to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so essentially what you're going to do is you're going to try and put a pretty thick layer of the Mod Podge down on that mat board or your cardboard, and then you're going to put your paper down and just do a thick layer on top. Then let it dry until it's clear and repeat the whole process again until it looks something like this. So now that we have this all ready, we're now going to cut it out. I am using an X-Acto knife here, but you can use scissors or... I guess a box cutter, be careful. Use whatever you want, cut it out. Okay, so now that we have it cut out, we're just gonna fit it into our cute little frame. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. But spoiler alert, it's actually gonna be too big. So I had to cut off a tiny bit more and then just put the glass back in the frame so you can use it later and fit it in. Okay, awesome. So now that we have this all prepped, the only thing that's left now is to paint some ghosts. Let's get spooky. All right, so. Now that we have our painting all ready, all we need is some sort of white paint and a couple of smaller paint brushes, better for detail work. This clear layer of Mod Podge that we've used is going to act as our base, as our sort of gesso for this piece. So it's nice because even if you do use oil paint, it's not going to bleed through or make any issues. So without a further ado, let's get spooky, shall we? All right, so I'm going to start by looking at the painting and looking at where ghosts might be hiding or just where realistically in the painting it would be fun for them to go. So I wanted to put some kind of peeking behind trees and I wanted some to be just wistfully walking through the forest. And as you can see, if you use oil paint, you can literally just wipe it off at any time and redo. So that's why I'm using it. But obviously you can use acrylic. That's super easy too. And I've done that. It's, it's kind of deuces, honestly. But yeah, so you're going to look at your painting and you're going to look and see where ghosts would be fun and then kind of squint and look at what the colors that are sticking out in said painting are and maybe blend a little bit of those into your ghosts so that they unify with the painting really well. In this case, for me, it was adding a little bit of blue and gray. In addition, something that's really going to help give your ghost dimension is to see that they are lighter at the top and darker at the bottom, which is gonna give them a little bit of a translucent effect in your painting. And then just use a little bit of a whiter color to add in some folds and a dark, almost black for the eyes, and you're good to go. All right, so this is now done. And the super fun thing is that this can work with like any kind of painting you want. You can print out Starry Night. You can print out other famous landscapes by people. You can basically do whatever you want when it comes to painting on different landscapes and painting little ghosts into them. 
Just for fun, I thought I would share a couple of other little ghost paintings that I've done over the past few days so that you can get some inspiration if you'd like. And last of all, I really just wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch until the end of the video. I really appreciate everybody's support. I cannot believe the ridiculous outpouring of love and support that you guys have given me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you guys have an incredible spooky season. And I will see you guys uh, next time.